Today on Judge Faith, this tenant has no clue how to protect his property in a tough neighborhood. My house got broken into. So his house gets burglarized and he brings in a girlfriend and a dog to protect the house. The stuff they stole was my checks. Every time I got paid, money was taken out. How many months did that happen? That happened down the line. This is where you're starting to sound ridiculous. And the landlord says he didn't get rent, but did get a big citation from the city. The citation simply said that it was, it was filthy. Oh, Roaches everywhere. And later, can this college student trust the person who crashed into her car to fix it? The ones in the house like, oh my gosh, Kyra just hit your car. You're going to take care of it? The one who wrecked it, the one who's driving your car with no insurance? I found that my insurance lapsed after. So you found out everything after you hit her car, that her car was there, <laughs> that you did have insurance, <laughs> and that you weren't going to make it around. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Miguel Gonzalez says he ran into an irresponsible tenant who didn't pay the rent and got him fined. He's suing for $5,489 in back rent and city citation costs. He is joined in court by his wife, Magdalena Gonzalez. Defendant Carlos Perez claims the home was infested with bugs and security was lacking. He's countersuing for $1,500 in property loss from a home burglary. He is joined by his mother, Veronica Perez. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Gonzalez and Gonzalez versus Perez. Thank you, Barbara. Miguel Gonzalez? Yes, Your Honor. And Magdalena Gonzalez. You are suing the defendant Carlos Perez for $5,489 for back rent and city citation costs? That's correct. And you were countersuing, sir, for $1,500 for property you lost in a home burglary? Yes, Your Honor. You have a witness with you today? Um, yes, I do. Who's your witness? My mother, Veronica uh, Perez. Veronica Perez? Yes. Okay. We'll start with you, Mr. Gonzalez. Tell me what's going on here. My wife and I own some properties that we actually rent. Uh, one particular property that we rented to Mr. Uh, Perez here was in San Jacinto. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath house. has a very big yard in the back, um, medium-sized yard in the front. Uh, I met with Mr. Perez and his father, and we signed a uh, lease agreement. How did you hear about their property? Um, we went around the block looking for a house, mm -hmm. and we found his house with the sign up in the front, decided to call him, meet him up, and settle the deal for the house. And what happens? Do the two of you sign a lease? Both of us signed the lease. May I see a copy of it, please? And did you move into the home with just your two children? Um, yes, I did. Okay. Okay, so what kind of tenant was the defendant? I would say the first four months he was a good tenant. After the first four months, then things went terribly wrong. Uh, he paid no rent. Hmm. Um, did you file a notice of eviction? Not at that time because... What was going on with you? Well, um, 2012, I was going through a very difficult divorce. So I had a very rough custody battle. CPS was involved, Child Protective Services. They needed me to find a house right away in order for me to see the kids. You stopped paying rent oh, yes. for a certain period of time. Um, and around February, my house got broken into. A lot of valuable stuff was stolen. What happened with the burglary? Well, the, by what the police said, they used a crowbar to pop open the window. There was no, it was not secure or anything. So you're suing him for the property lost in the burglary? How is, how is he responsible for that? Um, safety. There was, um, the, that one window was unsafe. There was, it was easy access to get into the house. Well, you say they no pried alarm. open the window. Yeah. There was no, no lock or no nothing around the window. It was easy to get into. You had criminals come and burglarize your home. He's not responsible for that. Is that why you stopped paying rent? No, um. Oh, I, the, that was my question. <laughs> okay. I was, I, was, I was getting to that. Okay. <laughs> um, the stuff they stole was part of my checks my banking. Um, during that time, every time I got paid, money was taken out. How many times does it take for money to be removed from your this, account this, for you to realize someone's taking this money? This happened two months down the road. So they're down the road, they kept taking 350, 
Um, I don't know. Are... Someone breaks into my home, burglarizes uh -huh. my home. I'm going to be keeping an eye out. I'm going to put an alert with the bank because your personal items were in there. Then How many months did that happen? That, that happened down the line. They kept okay, picking. Okay, so you gotta you gotta stop because yes. this is where you're starting to sound ridiculous. Yes. It only <laughs> takes a month or two for money. I mean, am I? You're his mother. Yes. You take someone's taking money out of your account. What do you do? You go to the bank. You say, "My home was burglarized. Now money's disappearing from my account." This didn't occur to you for several months. Oh, I had um, two accounts. One account I know that was taken out, so when I switched to my other one, later on, that account also... Was this the reason he told you he was out. not paying rent, sir? No, Your Honor. In fact, uh, I didn't know about the burglary until about a month after it happened, because I did pay a visit to the property to see what was going on with the rents, and, I, and that's when I actually met the girlfriend for the first time, who I never knew was living there to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that's Was she he, living there? Oh, she lived down maybe around June. She started moving in there, but... She was living there? Yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> and actually, the reason that he gave me for not paying the rent was because he was helping to pay for some funeral costs for a grandparent who was very dear to him. And that disrupted his finances and made him uh, go Is back... Is that the and, reason you told him? Oh, um, yes, that was part of the reason. How many months did you not pay rent, sir? I believe um, from May, June, July, August, September, October, like six months. <laughs> what was going on, Mom? Well, what so You're, what, 23 years old? Yes. You have how many kids? Um, three. Okay. I did tell Mr. Gonzalez that he did, he was going to have his girlfriend live in there because of what happened in the burglary. They stole his rent money. It started off with his rent money being stolen as well. He wasn't aware... Well, he didn't tell he, me that. Oh. Why? That's why I'm here. He didn't tell me so, his rent money okay, was stolen. Yeah, was I think that'd rent. be the first thing he yeah, would say I when know, I said, why see, didn't you pay rent? My rent money was stolen. Oh. Yeah, that was oh, part of it. Oh, you forgot? No, there are so many things. That, that, that small detail? Involved. Yeah, and that's the reason he had a roommate. This girl moved in, and it became his girlfriend afterwards. And he was going to get a dog to protect the house. I did tell him that. So his house gets burglarized, and he brings in a girlfriend and a dog it to protect the house. It was a friend first. It was a, like a roommate. <laughs> Coming up, does this tenant have a clue how to maintain a rental home? You have three grandchildren mm -hmm. living in a roach oh, infested home. Okay. It's not sanitary. Yeah. And later, a college student learns that admitting fault doesn't mean taking responsibility for it. And he didn't just hit my car. It was a huge gash. I'm not disputing the fact that I did hit her car. Why does she have to give you her car, sir? My car just barely touched her car. Sir, sir, her car was parked. <laughs> Plaintiff Miguel Gonzalez says he leased to an irresponsible tenant who didn't pay the rent and got him fined. He's suing for back rent and city citation costs. Defendant Carlos Perez claims the home was infested with roaches and security was lacking. He's countersuing for property loss from a home burglary. What happened with the citations you say you're suing for? There was a lien on the property from the city of San Jacinto that said you owe 1,040 some odd dollars. The citation simply said that it was, um, it was filthy. Were, were you keeping a filthy home, sir? Uh, no, I wasn't. Okay, let me see the photos. Wait, what is this? The day after he gave me the keys, my son and I went into the house to inspect the property. It was fast and ridden with oh, roaches everywhere. All the kitchen cabinets, all the kitchen drawers, in the stove, the microwave. The house was infested with roaches? Yes, yes, it was. They were hard to get rid of. I mean, there was nests inside of roaches, which oh I, I never God. heard about these things. Are these live? Very live. Mm. And like I said, my son... I mean, that, you... I can only imagine the kind of infestation. And they must have been crawling everywhere, all over you, your kids, the furniture, everywhere. Oh. Yes. Oh. And never once was I told about this. They just kept multiplying, the coming. The cockroaches were there already. They were there because... He never made a single complaint, ma'am. No. He never made a no, single complaint but I did about tell the Mr. roaches Miguel to the that management. That and you live saw. there. You don't make a single complaint to your landlord about an infestation like that. I don't believe for one second they were like that when he moved in. Ma'am, what is he like living in your home? 
No, he's clean, but he wasn't that kind of tenant. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna bother the landlord all the time for a little picky thing. I'll handle it myself. Okay, you you have three grandchildren mm -hmm. living in a roach oh, I, infested I, 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 home. It's not sanitary. Yeah, I know. It's not safe. This is not one of those little things that you don't bother the landlord about. It is not sanitary mm -hmm, for your exactly. kids, your grandkids to live in that kind of environment. May I see your ledger for the back rent, please? That's a ledger. So it's How much was the security deposit, sir? $850. You understand why he doesn't owe you for property stolen during a burglary. Oh, yeah. That was the independent mm -hmm. criminal act of a third party that he had absolutely nothing to do with. He's not responsible for that. So your counterclaim is dismissed. Judge, I, I find it a little bit ironic that uh, when we rented the house to Mr. Perez, that uh, the mother was trying to make him more responsible by having him live on his own. He's not ready. He's not ready. At 20, he just, he's just not ready. He's exactly where he needs to be right now, which is back in your home. For a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said only for a little bit. Only for a little bit. <laughs> Here's my judgment. Based on the ledger that you provided to me, the citations the defendant received, subtracting the security deposit and taking into consideration his source of income right now, I'm ordering the defendant to pay you $3,400 in back rent, sir. Judgment for the plaintiff. Plaintiff Neomani Pitt says a family friend admits he crushed her college car, but won't make good by fixing it. She's suing for $4,266 for repairs. Defendant Conrad Davis says she's to blame for parking where he couldn't see the car, and she rejected a fair repair, so he doesn't owe. Neomani Pitts, you are suing the defendant Conrad Davis for $4,266 damages to your car? Yeah. What year, make and model is your car, ma'am? It's a 2000 Toyota Corolla. 2000 Toyota Corolla. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you start from the beginning and tell me how you know the defendant? Okay. So, I know Conrad, he's a family friend. He's known my dad since before I was born. Um, him and I were both visiting my parents. He was there when I got there. And I got there around, like, mid-afternoon, and... Um, Where do you live? In Eureka, California. Okay. Well, the way my parents' house is set up, it's the house, and then there's a long driveway that runs parallel to the house, and I have pictures of that. You submitted a photo of that? Let me yes, take a look at it. So there's the house, and it's a long driveway that runs parallel to the house. This is after the accident, so we're outside kind of trying to see what's going on. My car is the green car. My brother's car is behind mine, the black, and Conrad's car was next to my brother's car. So he had to, like, reverse either, like, around that bush right there or ask me to move my car in order to get out. Okay, so what happened? How did the accident so happen? So at around, like, 5 in the evening, Conrad announced he was leaving, and a couple minutes later, my brother runs in the house like, oh, my gosh, Conrad just hit your car. So... At first, I didn't believe him. You know, I'm like, I don't understand how that could happen. I walk outside, and he didn't just hit my car. It was a huge gash that's, like, in my car. So Your what Honor, happened? Your, Your Honor, actually, um, if you notice, there was a big dent on the bumper before. I hit her car, but I was coming out very, very... Well, let me see the damage yes, to... I let me see the damage to her car. So okay. there's, you see, there's a dimple on the back of my car right there. That was done before. But the on the left side of my car, mm -hmm. that's what he did. Let's just start from the beginning. You hit her car, right? Yes, I did. How I did, did that happen? Actually, um, I was coming out. And there was some bushes there. And I was coming out. It was a little bit dark. It was in the, in, was the mid-afternoon, late Actually, afternoon. Actually, hold on a second. You, she, okay. you weren't in the car. It was parked. It was parked. No. Okay, so you hit a parked car. Yeah, but, but the reason why, if you notice right here, <laughs> Your Honor, there's some bushes here, and I was parked here. Right. I came at her car was parked almost right here. I, I was rushing to, no, to get to the post second, office. Okay. Wait, you were rushing to go where? To the post office. And when I came out, I thought I could um, manage my way right. to, to, um, towards so coming out without hitting her mistake, car. that was your mistake, right? And my car just barely touched her car. That, sir, that's not sir, barely. her car was parked. Yeah. You're, you're a family friend. How many times have you been to this home? Several times. Several times. So you know this driveway. I you know this area. I just didn't notice that her car was there, Your Honor. You, did, you just missed the whole dark. car. It was dark, Your Honor. So you had your headlights on? 
I, my headlights was not on as yet. Because okay, I was so that's out. your fault. Yes, you I didn't have the headlights that. on, yeah. so you couldn't see, so yeah. that's your fault. Yeah. Coming up, does knowing the facts equal knowing what's right? Why does she have to give you her car, sir? Um, Your Honor, because the, the value of the car you already is 2100 So why does she want to give it to you? <laughs> Plaintiff Neil Manny Pitt says a family friend damaged her car. She's suing for repairs. Defendant Conrad Davis says she rejected his fair offer to repair the vehicle, so he doesn't know. First, you said her car mm -hmm. was parked too far over, mm -hmm. and then about 30 seconds later, you said you didn't see it at all. So which is it? Okay, here's what's happening, Your Honor. Her car, I saw her car really after, but when I realized it... So you did see her car. So before, when you said you didn't see her car before you hit it, mm -hmm. what that, was that? That's when I noticed that it was parked too close to where I'm supposed to come out. So... However, Your Honor, I'm not disputing the fact that I did hit her car because I, I had, I, I came, she came out and she was very irate and I said, look, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going I'm to um, compensate you for the car. And she... Did you do that? No. She, she went and she got an estimate um, two days later and she came back with an estimate for $4,000. I said, but your car value is only $2,000. And um, she, and she... Excuse me. So, um... He, he said he would, like, he said he'd compensate me for them. He'd pay for, he said, I'll pay for out of pocket. Let's not involve insurance. I said, that's perfect because Did I'm Did you have insurance on your car? Your Honor, I found out that my, that my insurance lapsed after. So you found out everything after you hit her car, that her car was there, <laughs> that you didn't have insurance, and that you weren't going to make it around. Your Honor, let me explain. The fact is that I did, I intended to compensate her. I offered her three reason why I'm going to, number one, I, will, I told her that I will give you $500 for the damage. She okay. refused that. Because said, it's not I, enough. Okay, I'm and, then exactly. I, and I said, if that's not enough, I will take your car and I'll have it fixed completely. Why does she have to give you her car, sir? Um, Your Honor, because the, the value of the car you already is hit it. So why does she want to give it to you? The value you of already the car damaged is $2,100. She wanted $4,200. I wasn't going to give... What's the third reason? Because uh, you offered her 500 mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I, I offered her 500 Second, you I offered did... to physically take it into your own possession. And the third thing was I said, okay, I will buy the car outright for the value of the car, which is $2,100, and to take do that? the car. Yes, that seems he did. reasonable. In August. And take this the car. happened in May. And she I said no. I already made up my mind that that's, that wasn't an option. So was three months late. late, you made that offer three months later? You're friends with her dad, right? Yes, I what am. What was he right. talking? Was he talking to you about this? He told me that I have to settle it, and I told him that I, I want to settle it, but I want to come to an agreement with her where we can both work work it out. You wanted to give her twenty one hundred dollars, but then you would own the car; she would be without a car. Yes, you're right. Let me see the um, proof of damages, your estimate for the damages to the car. Sir, you said in your answer you barely tapped her car. You said that in court today too. Yes, I that's did. More than, that's more than a tap. I mean, that's the, that's the number one excuse. When someone knows they hit your car, they always want to minimize, well, I didn't do that. That damage must have been there beforehand. And now, Judge Faith rules. Knowing you hit this young lady's car. I, I do know that, Your Honor, but as, as you see that there was damage there before. You admitted that you were rushing, trying to get to the post office. You were clearly being careless and negligent, sir. And it, ma'am, it wasn't dark. These pictures were right after the accident. <laughs> Your Honor, she had no camera to take those pictures that day. It was so, a sir, week after sir, how she took you, those pictures. She's lying. She's destroying you today. <laughs> I'm going to order him to pay you the blue book value of your car, ma'am, in good condition. $1,692 judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.